Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and I like to share with you fountain pens, ink, and paper from around the world. And today, we're going to make a quick international trip between Germany and China. A little back and forth, because this pen brings us to that place. This is the Jinhao 80. This is not a Lamy 2000 from Germany. This is a Jinhao 80. And I will tell you, at first, I, I wasn't going to bother with this pen, but the more I looked at it, the more I got just a little bit curious. And I know, curiosity kills the cat. Sometimes it kills the pen as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do two, two things. First, we're going to do our usual thing. I am, from a fairly objective who's really perfectly objective, but from a fairly objective point of view, I'm going to look at this pen. We're going to look at its details. We're going to look at how well it does or does not write, how good it fits in the hand, and value and all those things. We do also have to deal with the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is, doesn't that look an awful lot like a clone of the Lamy 2000? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. Everyone has their opinions on whether or not a person should buy a pen like this. And everybody has their opinions on whether or not Jin Hao should even be making a pen like this. And then there is the opinion that I want to share with you. It is the number two thing. And you're going to have to wait until the very end of the video. And I know you're tempted now to skip ahead. Don't do it. But if you have to, go right ahead. And then I will give you that number two. I will give you what I think about it. And um, some of you are going to be happy with it. Some of you are not going to be happy with it. All of you will benefit from it. That, I assure you. So, let's flip the camera and dive right in. Okay, pop quiz. Which of these three pens is a Lamy 2000? Can you tell? Do you think you know? We know we're going to edge, edge, edge this one out immediately because it does not have the seam for the finial at the top of the cap that holds the spring-loaded clip in. So we know that this one gets the heave ho. This is, of course, the Keiko Edge with that wonderful roll stop and horrible clip. As far as I'm concerned, this pen has no clip. It has a roll stop. And it's it's a bit of a big schnoz there, is it not? So you're never going to mistake that for the Bauhaus-designed Lamy 2000. It's not going to happen. When these pens first came out, they did have a cracking issue, which I think is caused by the very stiff uh, clip mechanism there, and a problem that they said they were having with the uh, Macrolon mixture that they used, which is a fiberglass type mixture like in the Lamy 2000. And um, they had cracking issues, usually stress cracks somewhere right in here. Now, as you can see, I think clearly mine does not have that problem. This pen is only maybe a year or less old. It's fairly recent to me. And I only bought it because I, I'm really curious as to whether or not they've gotten that problem solved. And this was on sale really cheap, like 7 or $8 with shipping. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. I've written with this pen quite a bit. It has been inked the entire time. It gets a lot of use. Actually, mine, anyway, is a good writer. I lucked out and got a really good nib in my Keiko Edge, actually in both of them. And so far, it's been cracking good. No cracks there. This is um, nearly two years old, I believe, give or take. And it was, I bought this as soon as the blue ones came out. I do like that clip better. I think somehow that disappears better than the matte does, which is not what you would expect for shiny, but it does. And I like the blue better. And I still think, by the way, they should make this pin out of this metal, the whole thing. Really, really nice effect on the metal. But it, too, has zero cracking issues whatsoever. It does, however, and I mentioned this in its original review, it does dry out if it's left alone before too long. I've not even had that problem with the black edge. Okay, little update there, little side issue. Now let's ask, which of these pins is... A Lamy 2000, and which is a Jin Hao 80. Well, that's the issue most people are going to have with this pen. At a distance, can you tell? Uh, if I turn it like this, can you tell? If I turn this one like this, can you tell? There, by the way, is where the giveaway is. First, there's one other quick giveaway, but it can be harder to spot from this distance, and that is this. A Lamy 2000 will say Lamy right there, the Jin Hao does not. There are other differences. The Lamy 2000 will have a really nice polish here on the top 
of the cap. At the bottom, there will be this light gray insert, and it's a bit more matte on the Lamy 2000. Of course, there will be no injection molding marks because this is a Macrolon pen. Weight is going to be a difference. You pick them up and you know immediately which one you have. The other difference is, of course, this is a piston filler. They make this pen so well. Let me just do a little sideline here for the Lamy. They make this so well. It's hard to tell when you first pick one up that it is indeed a piston filler, but there is a seam at the end of this piston handle that just disappears. This is one of the things that to me makes this pen so incredible. I know that's a really small little manufacturing detail, but those who know, know that's not necessarily easy to make happen. And they do a fantastic job of that. And then of course, once you get into the pen, you have that ink window, which, you know, some people really don't find all that useful. I don't find it useful in terms of finding the level of the ink, but whether or not I have any, yeah, and if I'm getting low, it's at least better than nothing. And then, of course, you have that aluminum grip section, which is short, and I find myself holding the pen actually back above it, closer to the ink window. So that is the real deal. The Jinhao, from the outside, might fool some of the people some of the time, but it's not going to fool all the people all the time. Jin Hao has been better in the past at differentiating their pins from the exterior from other pins that might have inspired them, like the 51A from a Parker. You don't mistake one for the other. They've kind of made sure you don't mistake one for the other, and it's more heavily branded as a Jin Hao. That's actually a thing I've liked about their pins when they've paid homage to another pin, is that they've made sure to say, hey, we're not trying to be that pin. But when I saw this pin online, I noticed that they were not doing that with this pin. There is no big, uh, sometimes obnoxious, I get it, but there is no big differentiator on the outside of this pin. And I, you put me in the, in the group of people that wishes there was something more obvious. If you're going to do a pen that draws this much inspiration from another, you need to differentiate and make sure that people can see that you're paying respect without ripping off. And so I, I'm kind of disappointed to see them go that close uh, to the original pen. And uh, that's probably putting it a little bit gently, but let's move on because once you get into the details of the pen, there actually are some bigger differences. So there obviously is no branding there and uh, that I'm fine with, but there should be something somewhere telling me that what it is and what it is not. There is at the top of the cap a difference. This is matte and uh, it seems to scratch kind of easily and show wear a bit easily. So that is not going to look like a Lamy. But see, I'm a Lamy 2000 owner, so I'm going to notice that. People who don't own might not really catch that detail, so that's not a differentiator by much, and I'm not even going to give them a point for that. Uh, then at the bottom, I actually was disappointed to see that they use something so similar, although this is shinier and certainly not polished with the same finesse. Uh, it does still, it, 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 it's enough to, from a distance, a person may or may not know. So on the exterior of the pen, I'm dinging Jin Hao for not differentiating the pen enough. At least the edge. I mean, come on. You can't get more obvious than the Jimmy Durante clip, right? So there's that. Now open up the pen, and they've done a better job of differentiating from the Lamy 2000. So let's do that. So first you have the striated barrel and grip section, which are matching plastics. This is not metal like in the original Lamy or in the Edge. It has this trim ring here, which is in neither of those pins, and I actually think that looks just fine. Then you get to the nib, and we are not dealing with a hooded nib. We are not dealing with, like in the Keiko, just a traditionally shaped uh, number five nib. We have got the Jin Hao Lamy-like and Lamy-compatible nib. So this is their nib, and it is openly branded Jin Hao with a great big F for fine. So, you know, quarter of a point for that. And then a very similar plastic 
feed. These are swappable with Lamy nibs. Now you will either see that as one more offense or you will see that as a great little bonus. If you don't like the hooded nib on the Lamy 2000, then uh, this is better. When you open this up, you find that you have metal on metal threads, or at least, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if that's metal or chromified plastic, if you know what I'm saying. Plastochrome, I like to call it. This is metal. Anyway, and you have a Jinhao included cartridge, which I've noticed some of their cartridges are of a different design than in the past. They've all worked just fine. So I don't know if it's an improvement or just, you know, different. And this time, it is not an international standard compatible converter. You're going to have to go with the 3.4 millimeter Chinese standard cartridges and converters. So that is also a change for Jinhao. All right, and for our size comparison today, we're going to look at the Jinhao 80. There's no sense comparing that to the Lamy 2000. The sizes are the same. This is the Keiko Edge in blue, the Hero 616, and a Jinhao 100 in Galaxy Blue. Isn't that just a great resin? Then the Pilot Metropolitan, the Jinhao 51A, and that really cool resin, and a Charcoal Lamy Safari. All right, and here are all the pins posted with that Jinhao just barely squeezing in. And here are the pins unposted and uncapped. So this is, in case you're confused, the Jinhao 80. It comes with a fine nib, or this pin is a fine. And the ink today is Diamine Oxford Blue, one of my favorites. Let's test for wetness with this nib. Not too bad at all. So a little bit of a, a dryness there. Let me just do a, another quick test. Yeah, so somewhat dry actually, although I think laying down plenty of ink. You're not going to get flexed. This is a hard steel nib. It's not made for that. Don't push it. This one has that pencil-like, do you hear it? Pencil-like feedback. Now, I like a pencil-like feedback as long as it isn't scratchy or rough or uh, pulls at the fibers. This is none of that. There's no nib alignment problems or smoothness issues whatsoever. It writes smoothly, but with both a pencil-like feel and uh, uh, tangible and audible feedback. So you're probably going to hear that as I write today. It's been a reliable writer for me. No issues, no dry out issues or anything like that. Did get a little bit of a skip there. I talked a lot before doing this and that and had this uncapped quite a while. And so that may be a little bit of dryness here. But as you can see, it's writing just fine. No real problems. All right, places I'd like to go. Writing-wise, I find this pen, ergonomically, the, the balance of it and posted is just excellent. It's a nice, lightweight pen. And so just from an objective point of view, the pen writes really quite well. And uh, that's been a pleasant surprise. The first Jinhao pen, let me just say this, the first Jinhao pen I ever had with this type of nib I swapped the nib out. I didn't actually like it, and I just didn't think that they were as good at this as they are their standard nibs, and I think that was the case. However, they've refined their process, and the ones that I've been getting lately are better, and this one writes quite well. I like it. Uh, do I like it as well as a Lamy nib? It depends on the Lamy nib. Because, you know, I get a lot of variance in my Lamy nibs, it seems like. And I, I hear I'm not the only one. Uh, but I do uh, like this particular nib and this particular pen. And this pen, it it's better than I expected. It writes well. The balance is really nice. And I, uh, I actually do, from an objective point of view, I like it. When I look at it laying here, 
those issues of it shouldn't look that much like the other pen, they start to bug me again. And so there is that. Uh, I don't get that with the Edge because it's different enough. I honestly don't see it as uh, a copy of the Lamy at all. Obviously, it takes its inspiration from it, but at least they designed an actual different pen, you see? And so this pen never gives me that grief. Let me just show you, by the way, just to show you how this pen writes. I haven't done a, a re-review of this because I didn't feel like I needed to. But because I know not everybody likes this nib, listen to the difference. This is a really nice smooth nib and this is just a black cartridge that came in the package with this pen which I usually don't use but I wanted to use it up not let it waste away on the shelf there and it turned out to be a really nice um, black ink. It's branded Keiko, so that's what I'm going to call it. But this pen, I just find, uh, let me just do a little quick scribble, look at that. Reliable, I jumped right there, but a really nice nib. Smooth, writes well, mine's been great, and if you don't like it, swap it. You can do that, right? Then, and I know this is the Lamy 2000 because it weighs more. <laughs> Sad that that's the only way I can tell from the outside. It's not. I went over that with you before. The Lamy, obviously, is my favorite of these. And this is a fine. You'll notice that that is a big difference. This edge is actually an extra fine, but it trends more fine. It's a Western extra fine. That's a German nib. And then that is a fine. But this is, uh, let me just do my wetness test there. A little bit dry, but wet enough for me. Just about, actually that kind of matches too, doesn't it? And this is a diamine. Majestic blue. Really nice ink with a sheen to it. That I really like. So obviously one of my top pens, one of my favorite pens. I have not even reviewed this pen for you. I should really get on that, shouldn't I? But in the meantime, this pen, I don't like that it looks that much like the Lamy. I've told you that even though I would consider this a clone, uh, a clone leaning toward an homage. I don't want to give it that kind of a nice review to say it's just an homage, so I'm going to say clone. Uh, it's not a fake. Uh, see, open it up, and you know it's not, but, you know, it could have done at least that much more differentiation. Maybe they could have done something where they improved on the Keiko Edge. I actually would have liked that. Maybe Keiko could do that. Hey, Keiko, please, new clip. Um, but, is it a good pen? Objectively, it's a good pen. It's a good value for the pen, but you're going to have to wrestle with those issues. But before you wrestle, there is that second thing I wanted to tell you about this pen, and I want you to factor that in to your wrestling and maybe our attitudes about the wrestling. Okay, so I said there was one more thing that I wanted to say about this pen that I think benefits us all. Now, I, I'm not going to say anything that you've never heard before, but sometimes it's something we need to be reminded of. Have your opinions on clones, homages, copies, and I think probably all of us or nearly all of us share an opinion on uh, things that are absolutely definite fakes, okay? Uh, that's, that's kind of its own category, and I think Often, sometimes our view of fakes bleeds into our view of clones and homages. I get that. There's a little bit of a spectrum of opinion here. And all of those different places where you may be on that spectrum are welcome here. In the end, though, no matter what your opinion, there is one thing that I think we all benefit from remembering, and that is this. 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 This is, let me make sure I know which one I'm talking about. Yes, still this one. I would say the same thing about the Lamy 2000. This is just a pen. Just a pen. We enjoy them. We write with them. We express our thoughts and our hearts with them. But in the end, this is a tool. It's a pen. Never more important than how we treat one another. Because you, no matter where your opinion on all these things is, you 
are not just a pin. You're a person. So, love, respect, humility, this is just a pin. Just a pin. God bless you. Have a great week.